Orbital Supermax, Episode 4, by Jordan Ellinger. The 12 of us who had made it to the loading platform alive had to wait in the dark as the 13th choked to death on his own blood. The sound was hideous and wet, and no man spoke until it stopped. It was a sign of how badly the pirate force led by Martin Kilkenny had damaged the station that the lights wouldn't come on in the cargo area in which we now hid for several minutes. When they did flicker to life, the light was dim and uncertain. We felt the platform begin to stir in response to a summons from above. But Morgan bashed the panel to pieces with the butt of his rifle. Nearby, Wyrick, the prison's therapist and our de facto conscience, wept softly over the dead man. Okay, Nyland, said Morgan. We need another way off the station. I realized that I'd been staring into space and shook my head. We'd gone to the flight deck to steal the station's two Hornet fighters and then use them to run the blockade set up by the Nova Dogs and their captain, Martin Kilkenny, a pirate about whom I knew little, save that he was a cannibal and that there was, in the words of Kayla Wyrick, something wrong with his jaw. Now, with the flight deck in pirate hands, not only would we have to find another ship, we'd have to fight our way past those very same hornets. Nyland. I'm thinking, I said quickly. There are two mothballed fighters and an old station transport in a hangar on the other side of the station, but it would take a miracle worker to get them battle ready. Besides, Kilkenny's men would simply follow us in the hornets and gun us down. They wouldn't even need the rest of their ships. And we need to take out the fighters. Morgan glanced ruefully at the destroyed control panel. I guess that was a little hasty. Is there another way we can get up to the flight deck? We can't go back there. Wyrick rose. She dealt with the prisoners at the armory, traveled through the station with ex-convicts, and survived being shot at by the Nova Dogs. Some women would have crumbled under the pressure, but she seemed to have gained something from the experience. She stood straighter, held her chin up. Gone was the therapist's passivity. She would have a hard time re-entering the practice once this was all over. We need every man we have left. Morgan's fist clenched. We have no other choice. We don't negotiate with terrorists, I said, not realizing that I'd spoken aloud. When I found all eyes upon me, I realized that I'd have to explain myself. We don't negotiate with terrorists. If a group of prisoners ever seized the flight deck, we were to activate the automated turrets, blow them to kingdom come. Wyrick flushed with anger. I never knew about that policy. Flushing prisoners into space is inhuman. Morgan put his hand out to stop her. It's that or die. He gave her room to object, but she remained sullenly silent. Okay. He said, continuing on. We activate the turrets, blow up Kilkenny and his men, and then escape on backup fighters. Not so fast, I interjected. There's a lot of missing steps there. The turrets were activated on the command deck, and that's gone. Then there's the matter of fixing the fighters. Never mind them. I know a guy. The turrets, though. Morgan looked around and pointed at several circular nodes in the ceiling. There. Can we hack them from here? No. They're strictly remote. Can't have the prisoners disabling the turrets themselves. I rose, excited despite myself. But there is a server room. If it hasn't been destroyed... Fine. Whatever Morgan was about to say was drowned out by a burst of static from the station-wide comm system. The voice that came up was so deep and sonorous that I had no doubt it belonged to a pirate captain. Of course, it was Kilkenny himself. My name is Martin Kilkenny, and you can consider me your parole officer. I say parole because you are not free men. A free man is a man who can do any task he chooses. But there is only one task I ask of you, to earn a place aboard my ship. I am looking for a man by the name of Martin Browning. Prison number AX-3459-87. There was a pause. You may have heard that the Nova Dogs are cannibals. You have not heard wrong. We are creatures of the Void, and the Void is a hungry place. Does it not try and claw its way into your station? Does it not suck you into its belly like wet pasta? We follow 
this example. What we don't use, we eat. There are 12 spots aboard my ship. One in the crew cabin and 11 in the kitchen. A useful man will earn his place in the crew. Complete silence. Charming, said Wyrick dryly. Maybe he'll find this chap and leave, said one of the prisoners, wispy hair, body like a bag of sticks. It was Relic, I think, the prisoner who'd threatened us with a patch gun. Maybe, I said, and let the word dangle in the air. If Kilkenny was hunting this Browning character, he'd leave us alone. That was the thought, of course, but I knew that we'd killed some of Kilkenny's men, and he'd come after us for that if he could. We made our way through the utility corridors towards the server room. The former prisoners who trailed behind us whispered about Kilkenny's offer. No one seemed to know anyone named Browning, but each of them thought they knew someone who did. Despite the recent massacre of their friends, they all dreamed that they would be the one to claim Kilkenny's unused birth. The thought that the winner of their little contest might have to eat the losers never occurred to them. I thought I knew a better way to find Martin Browning. Wyrick walked at the front of the group, just behind Morgan. I caught her arm and then with a nod of my head indicated that she should slow her pace. If Morgan noticed, he said nothing. There's a direct terminal in the server room. With your access codes, you can find out who this Browning guy is, which cell he's in. You want to turn him over to kill Kenny after everything we've seen? Maybe. We need to consider our options here. What if he gets his man and... The unlikelihood of my own suggestion made me stumble. Well, he just leaves. One man's life in exchange for everyone on this station. Who wouldn't make that deal? The man in question, I suspect. Wyrick seemed to think that ended the argument and rejoined Morgan in the front. The deck which housed the server room was dark, and I worried that it had no power. If that was the case, we'd have to draft a new plan, and quickly. Morgan found a few palm lights on the wall, which he distributed. We passed through a door that had once been secure and entered a room that was the kind of hot that soaked through our clothes and dried out our eyes. Banks upon banks of black boxes stared at us with flickering green and red lights. Phew, it's hot in here, said Relic unnecessarily. Morgan looked around and then moved down one of the rows. Let's find an active terminal. Spread out. I followed Wyrick. I had worked out something important on the journey here. The server room was truly the heart of the station. From here, all things were possible. Though the records of my arrest and trial would eventually be sent back to the UEE, we were isolated enough that transferring large amounts of data could get expensive. For now, it was all stored in the station's servers. Given the right access, I could wipe out evidence of my crimes. Everyone who knew that I was even a prisoner was dead, aside from Wyrick herself. And after this was all over, I could perhaps find a way to buy her silence. All I'm saying is there's no harm in finding out which cell is his. It's the only thing that Kilkenny wants. It has value. We could trade that information. But then maybe warn Browning that Kilkenny was coming for him. Wyrick stopped cold. I nearly ran into her. She turned and I could see the blue of her eyes in the palm light. I'm your therapist, Nyland. I know you better than you know yourself. You're not a coward at heart. You know that caving to Kilkenny is wrong. This self-serving criminal that you've become is just your way of dealing with your guilt. You're punishing yourself. The palm light dipped and I caught hold of one of the server racks. My brother has nothing to do with this. I licked my lips with a dry tongue. And I may be a self-serving criminal, but I'm not punishing myself. I'm trying to use every tool at my disposal to get us all out of here alive. If therapists can lie, then so too can their patients. Wyrick caught my gaze for an uncomfortably long time, her blue eyes darting microscopically, as if to keep the line between our pupils unbroken. At last, she seemed to come to some conclusion. I will give you the access codes, if you want them. Do you really want them, Nyland? Think very carefully. Despite myself, I did. I thought of Danny and our days in the academy. Before his death, I'd been a straight arrow, 
I never would have considered committing a crime, let alone wiping out evidence that I'd done it. What had changed since then? I shied away from that thought. Damned head shrinkers were starting to get to me. Yes, I said as innocently as I could. I was uncertain if she'd follow through on her promise, but she pressed on a sliver of metal and a terminal popped open. She punched in her codes and then walked away. Her radical therapy had failed, I told myself victoriously. It was only after I'd wiped the evidence of my crimes from the database that I'd realized that it was not a victory at all. For some reason, it felt more like a loss. I had pulled up a query window and the cursor flashed at me. I suddenly felt a huge weight upon me that had nothing to do with the heat. I was betraying Wyrick's trust twice in as many minutes. I told myself that I'd make it up to her. At first, the thought was flippant, but it felt right, so I told myself again that I'd make it up to her, and I meant it this time. My fingers danced across the keyboard as I punched in Martin Browning's name. To my surprise, it came up blank. Out of the 2,400 prisoners on OSP-4, not a single one had the misfortune to be named Martin Browning, and the ident Kilkenny had given belonged to a dead man named Wilbur Marks. Morgan had found another terminal at the back of the room and brought up a view of the flight deck. A targeting rectacle hovered over the two hornets. Ugh, the connections are fried, he said, wiping sweat off the back of his neck and flicking droplets onto the floor. It's this damn heat. I mean, one of the turrets is responding. We won't have much time. Target the fighters first, I said, wiping sweaty palms against my pants. The fighter's deadly, but we can outrun her. Find what you were looking for? Asked Morgan, glancing over his shoulder. Sure. Used one of the terminals to check my messages. Pay some bills, you know. It was a weak joke. But he grunted a laugh and didn't follow up. Wyrick standing beside him studiously avoided looking at me. I tried to think of something to say to win back her trust, but I couldn't. Morgan punched a few keys into the terminal, and the targeting rectacle turned red. Consider this a love letter addressed to Captain Kilkenny. He said, mashing down the keys. This is Captain Bane. Thank you for taking the time to listen to SC Lorecast's telling of Orbital Supermax Episode 4. This official Star Citizen lore can be found within the Spectrum Dispatch section of the Roberts Space Industries website. I'm glad to be working on this series again, and I'm grateful to the cast of voice actors who have committed themselves to their roles. Normally, fatigue sets in right around this time, and people who showed a great deal of enthusiasm at the onset might be inclined to slow down. This, however, does not seem to be the case with the men and women who work to bring you the characters you have come to know in this series, and I'm excited to say that it is our intention to focus on the completion of this series before all others. This is not to say that we may not slip in some unrelated content over the next few months, but that where possible, we will do our best to move the series forward with as few interruptions as possible. And since it's been asked a few times, I will state publicly that yes, we intend to produce a full-length version of each series once we are complete with all the episodes within that series. We haven't entirely settled on how exactly this will be done, but I can say that you will not be subjugated to my long-winded closing statements between each episode. I am considering integrating some in-fiction commercials or lore-based advertisements, but if you have any alternate suggestions, please leave a comment. I would love to get your feedback on that. As always, thank you to my subscribers and Patreon supporters. I hope you are still enjoying our efforts. Thank you to all the people who like and share our work. Thanks to the community members and content creators who mention SC Lorecast on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. We are slowly but surely building up a following that I'm quite proud of, and most of that is because of your effort. One last thing. Recently, I had a chance to actually log into the game and kill some time. I was surprised at how many people, upon seeing Captain Bane on their screen, took the time to hit F12 and tell me personally that you appreciate my work. So thank you for the kind words and sincere encouragement. I'll do my best to live up to your expectations. Again, thank you for listening. To all you new backers, welcome to the community. And finally, to all you Star Citizen fans out there, we'll see you in the verse.